are you doing, Sue? Well, I'm unhooking the electric and getting ready for our next destination. How come Mark's not doing that? Um, this is my job, actually. Oh, I can, okay. he, he does the poop holes. I'm okay with that. Ah, yeah. <laughs> it's the Black Waste, honey. This is a family channel. Oh, yeah, good point. And what are you doing? Well, I'm heating up the Honda and taking some video, but uh, are we going anywhere in particular today? Um, yeah, you tell them. You tell them where we're going. Where are we going, Mark? Well, we got a couple of things. We're going to see a special guest that uh, we're going to keep a secret yet. It's in uh, Yuma, Arizona, but we're so embarrassed by how dirty Miles is in certain areas. And Don't com point it out. compared to his rig, we just look awful. So we're going to cheat. We're going to start stop at a blue beacon and get it washed twice by spraying on it and not touching it with brushes. And we're going to hope for the best. We uh, did a video on Blue Beacon in Wisconsin. It's a pretty new one. They did an excellent job. It was a double wash. There's two Blue Beacons we're gonna go by. The first one looked new, and that's the one I wanted to go to. But when we called them, they were like, no, we use brushes, you know. And so Sue called the other one, which is older and is in back of a pilot, I think, right, Sue? I think so. And uh, they were with the program. They said, yeah, we can, we'll wash it twice with soap and uh, spray it down and hope for the best. And that's what we wanted to hear. So we're getting ready for our new guest. We'll be on the road in about an hour. Go. Yep. So today's journey that we'd invite you to come along on is uh, just driving from the Pima County Fairgrounds to the West Wind RV Resort. And you can see that uh, this route here is on Google three hours and 32 minutes driving the speed limit. The Chan Man doesn't drive the speed limit. I'm usually less. So you have to add some time on for that. <clears throat> and you'll see in this episode that we stop at two rest stops along the way. We're also going to stop at a blue beacon and get the rig washed. I want to show you something about this Pima County Fairgrounds. It's in the middle of nowhere, but the place is a giant facility that would virtually, except during the fair uh, when it's run, you would always have availability here. Uh, when we stayed at this place, we drove in and we stayed in this area here that had full hookups and electric, and we were able to attend this big exposition center here had a, a barrel racing horse show and it was not attended that well only because of the COVID protocols here, but we were able to sneak in and get a little footage of that. And I think Sue's actually working on uh, the episode after this one uh, on the Pima County Fairgrounds. Uh, if a person was to drive in the back here, there's all sorts of additional space back here that starts to turn into dry camping. So this place will always have room for you if you ever decide to stay here. Now, not associated with the fairgrounds, but nonetheless connected enough that you knew about the activities. Here's the Tucson Speedway, which uh, has events going on in more normal times. Here is the Honda Circuit. This actually is a giant go-kart track that was running all the time. Really a fun place, I'm sure, to be at. And then if that isn't uh, enough fun, they have the Tucson Drag Strip, which is kind of built into the place here. And we're on our way over here to the West Wind RV Golf Resort area. Now, we have stayed at this place in the past about two years ago. Uh, and we'll have some footage for that in a week or so. The nice thing about this place, especially if you're a golfer, they have a nine-hole really cute golf course that's built into this place. Uh, this building right here is the main building, but this is their restaurant, and you can see that their pool is got kind of a unique shape. This kidney bean-shaped pool is really nice. It was uh, open when we were there. This uh, 
comma-shaped hot tub had bubbles in three different areas that could be controlled. So one side could have bubbles and the other side uh, could choose not to have bubbles if that's what they wanted. When we drove in, we drove in and queued up in this area and I backed into this space here right next to this park model. And you'll see in the video where I almost take out a pole on this side which would have really been a bad way to start this uh, particular stay. But we missed it, and that's all that counts. Wheels are returning. Permission to come aboard. Here. Hope for the best here. What's that mean? Going over that. That's why I went at an angle. Get stuck with your bottom there. I hate that. Good job, dude. 210. Taking left here. Yeah, taking left. Your way. It's good. Clear. When people always stop and ask me, they go, hey Mark, where do you like to drive the best? I have to be honest with you, I like it when I'm driving out west the best. The roads don't have big giant potholes in them and they're typically wide enough and even when they're not wide enough, when you're out west, there's hardly any traffic on them. So it's kind of like what you're seeing here. And for a while now, I've been wanting to make a video that kind of just shows what happens on a typical trip when we're driving the motorhome and what better place to do it on some of the favorite roads I drive on. Where we're going today is we're leaving the Pima County Fairgrounds and we're driving to a resort in Yuma, Arizona and we'll be there for three days. So I'm thinking most folks already have guessed that we're going to be visiting Bob and Pearl in Yuma from the channel next exit just passing through and I can tell you that we're really excited to meet with them they if you can recall are a channel back in August of 2019 that gave us a shout out on their channel and sent us quite a bit of like-minded uh, subscribers and will forever be appreciative of that. All the areas in this video that are sped up are 600% of speed, but I chose not to speed this section up because in the distance, this is kind of indicative of why Sue and I chose a Class A motorhome with the big giant uh, windshield to look through. Um, you know, I don't know how it's coming across on your screen in your home or on your mobile device, but I can tell you that it is just spectacular when the lighting is right and the mountains are in the distance and you know everything's working okay and your inverter isn't you know making beeping noises on you and you can just enjoy uh, the music in the cab and the conversation of your travel partner. Sue and I actually haven't done any serious amount of traveling on the East Coast 
and we hope to do that uh, someday. But I got to be honest with you, I really got hooked on the wide open spaces out west here, so I think that's why we've spent so much time out here. One of the things that we've learned is that when you're driving in the cab, you can only listen to music so much, and sometimes you actually want to listen to a book. So we've pretty much uh, started doing that by downloading some audio books or different books uh, that are available on Amazon Prime. But another good tip that we could give you is to look on your laptop for some of the talks, the TED Talks, that might be subjects that you're interested in. The beauty of that is depending upon what's happening in the world at the time, or all of a sudden you might drive by something or uh, some event or a sign that triggers some conversation, you can dial into a TED Talk and it can keep you amused for you know, 15 minutes to 30 minutes at a crack. And you'd be amazed at how many miles you can grind away when you're both engaged on a conversation like that. We're coming up on four years now driving around here, and you wouldn't believe the assortment of things that we've driven by. Now, this is not particularly spectacular here. Uh, you know, we never seem to have the camera out at the right time, but this initially looks like it's a tank, but if you get closer to it, you can see it's just a section of the upright that holds a wind turbine up. Uh, the reason I know that is I worked for a wind turbine company. You can see the hatch here on the right hand side. So that's literally the bottom section of the wind turbine. And uh, as we drove on, we essentially ended up driving by the trucks for the entire uh, wind turbine tubing setup. I'd like to invite you to check out episode 58 that Sue and I did uh, a while back when we were in Palm Springs. We were in a particular area called the Gorgonio Mountain Pass. It was an area that was just loaded with literally a thousand wind turbines and it was just a fascinating place for me to be and see it. Check it out, see if you like it. So here we are pulling in to another blue beacon. And apparently a lot of blue beacons position themselves, uh, you know, fairly smart, I guess, in back of large travel and trucking centers so that they kind of have a built-in audience. And this is the place we called ahead to. It was actually the older of the two that seemed to be more with it and said, yes, we understand the concerns on RVers. We won't use brushes. And they offered a wash where they actually wash it down, let it sit for a few minutes, and then wash it down the second time. And I gotta tell you, for 70 bucks to do the rig and the Honda, it did a really good job. And I'm pretty sure that we're gonna just continue to always use uh, Blue Beacons because it's just too big of a job for us to undertake and quite honestly, um, a lot of resorts don't let you do it yourself. Um, there are some people that sneak one in every once in a while, but for the most part, it's kind of a gig that's reserved for people uh, in the local area that they have agreements with. So after we waited our time period for our turn, they ended up pulling us in. You can see the amount of people they have that jump on this thing. I mean, you're in and out of here in, uh, you know, 10, 12 minutes, and you might have, you know, 10, 12 minutes for each truck in front of you. It kind of depends on what they're doing. Sometimes if they're cleaning out the interior of the truck before you, it does take longer.
what we have coming up next is one of the many adventures that all of us that have been driving RVs for a long time know happens time to time, and that's taking a wrong turn, which is, I guess, certainly better than getting lost, or even worse than that, driving down a road that you can't turn around on. But what happened to us here is after we exited this particular place, uh, we knew it was an easy on, easy off. I mean, after all, in the distance there, you can see the freeway. What we didn't know was how quickly after we got on the freeway ramp that on that ramp itself, we had to make a quick choice. Uh, I think it was a left or a right choice and we went right and we should have went left. This is an example of when it's nice to have a great navigator like Sue. When we were at the Blue Beacon Car Wash here, you see this little gap in the road. Well, it's not a gap, it's because there's this cluster of roads. And for whatever reason, when we drove out of the Blue Beacon and we got on the freeway exchange here, we had a turn that we had to make the right decision real quick right here. And we did not make the right decision and we ended up going on 10. Sue immediately realized that. I didn't. I'm just in charge of putting it between the white lines. And she quickly redirected me to get off, to take this turn, to get back on. And before you knew it, we were back on our way. And that's kind of the calamity that you're seeing with all of the turns that I'm taking now on camera here. One of the things that Sue does on travel days is she makes sure that she packs us a lunch. And it's kind of a little treat that we leave as a loose plan. Uh, we don't really pre-plan where exactly we're gonna eat. We kind of wait until our stomach tells us it's time to do that. But this parking area popped up and you really never know what you're gonna expect. This one ended up being uh, certainly big enough for the rig to be able to pull over on the right. I guess if we had chosen, and many times we do, to sit outside and eat, we could. But for whatever reason, uh, we were perfectly happy to just sit and yak inside the rig. Uh, got done eating, everybody visits the restroom, and before you know it, we're on our way again. We need to put some miles behind us, honey. Mm. Or even curl or count. Mm. Not till tomorrow, babe. Now I've got to set up this next section correctly. When people ask me uh, what it's like to drive this Class A and some of your more memorable drives, I'm sure everybody thinks about the 9% grade you went down and some of the mountain valleys and uh, you know, you name it. But for me, it actually was the slow curved incline coming into Yuma in November of 2018 
And the reason it's so memorable for me is that's one of the first videos that Sue and I set to music when we were just doing things on Facebook. And I can't tell you how many times I watched that myself over and over, realizing that I'm just like watching my past because I did it and I do it, you know, every couple of weeks. But the music was just so awesome. I wish I could have put that on the tube here for you, but I had to strip away the music because the music that is on that particular uh, video is not available on our music licensing program. The original music was by an artist called Nigel Stanford, S-T-A-N-F-O-R-D, and I'm going to have it up on the screen here in a moment. It was actually playing on the stereo in the cab, and it was just so perfectly set for the pace and the incline that we were traveling at. It's, uh, it's forever uh, in my mind, that's how that music is categorized. Uh, what I'm starting out with here is actually the grade on how it looked when we entered it just a few months ago uh, when we came in to visit uh, Bob and Pearl. And shortly I will switch to the actually more colorful uh, uh, footage showing coming up that grade and I had to use video that already had some writing in it so I've corrected it a little bit when it talks about the music being the original music that I was listening to but certainly everything else that's uh, you know pre-written into the video is correct so I hope you enjoy it So as Sue and I were coming into Yuma for the first time on November 28th, 2018, we were really excited because this was going to be our second wintering in the RV since we retired. And we had hatched a plan where we were going to stay in Yuma for a month, then we were going to drive to San Diego for a month, we were going to spend a month in uh, desert hot springs and then a month in Las Vegas and then a month in Central California. So we had plenty of adventures ahead of us. In the year that we had traveled prior to this particular trip, Sue had recorded all of our travels on Facebook. And we had been kind of in the back of our minds thinking that it's a lot of work. You don't have that many Facebook friends that end up looking at your travels. And she would do a really good job setting, the, uh, you know, the video to music. And I just thought, you know, we really need to share this with other people. Now, as it turned out, just like you'll see later in this video, how cold and windy it is, in Yuma in the December time frame, it was also that cold when we were there on this prior trip and it just lended itself for us to spend a lot more time than normal in the rig and that's when we actually hatched the plan to start a YouTube channel called Our Journey in Miles and we reconstituted as many of the Facebook videos as we could stripping away the music if we could because we certainly weren't smart enough to use licensed music back then and we tried to salvage what we could and we launched our channel in the very end of December 2018. So it turns out in Yuma, Arizona here there's plenty of places 
to stay at. In fact, this roadway that we're going to be turning on, this frontage road, has a number of large kind of fancy uh, snowbird RV parks along the way to stay. And we stayed at this one because it was going to be relatively close to Bob and Pearl and we had stayed there uh, in the past and we knew it was good so you know why buck uh, success. So the two videos that we did last time we were here, I invite you to check out. One of them is the Yuma Territorial Prison, which is really interesting to do. And then, as luck would have it, when you're at that prison, you can look down at a bike path. And that was an awesome trip as well. So we took that with our recumbent bikes, and it goes all along a bunch of irrigation canals and goes through a bunch of interesting areas. Check them out. I'll put them up on the screen. So pulling into this place was like coming home because we had stayed here for months. So we were very familiar with how nice it is. In the distance is the main clubhouse and in non-COVID times, there would just be tons of things to do there. I actually just checked the website and apparently it's uh, wide open now for activities. They've got all sorts of dances in that building that you can sign up for. Off to the left there actually is the restaurant that we ended up uh, meeting Bob and Pearl at. What we're doing here is we parked at an angle because I don't quite fit that length that they've got prescribed there. You go in, you check in, then you get uh, a, an escort here that will show you through the place. This place has a little bit over 1,000 spots in it. So it's unbelievably big. I actually did get lost in this place one time, driving my car in it, trying to leave. Uh, I know that's hard to believe, but uh, if you ever uh, honed in on my navigation skills, you'd know that I didn't make that up. Um, here's the little issue that I'm going to show you we had with the light pole. Uh, as we pull up here, Sue and I decide uh, what we're going to do. She decides to exit the RV, of course with the walkie-talkies in hand so we can communicate. We've learned a long time ago that you don't necessarily listen to anything that the camp hosts uh, are trying to tell you unless um, it's obvious that you need their help. Usually you don't. It's appreciated, but you have to learn to just trust uh, your travel partner. Well, there's the lamp post I almost bought and I swear if I had extra chrome plating on my uh, outboard mirror on that side, I would have hit that lamp. Uh, a little bit later when the camp host gets into his uh, golf cart and decides to leave, he kind of swings by that post because I think he was as uh, surprised that I missed it as I was after I backed up. You know, we've been at this almost four years now and you try to be careful and you try to get better at everything you do, but I'm telling you, just sooner or later, you know, the, the chances can uh, catch up to you. We're glad it didn't catch up to us this time. I'll put the arrow up on the screen here. It doesn't look real close in this video, but I can tell you it took my breath away when that thing swept into my view. I'm like, oh my God, you know, uh, that would have been for a bad day. So that's it. That's your typical average relocation drive. Had a little excitement here in the end with the pole. But other than that, it's uh, pretty much how it is when you're traveling out west and you have beautiful scenery to look at and uh, you don't have a lot of traffic issues. Uh, if you are a subscriber and have been with us for a while, we want to thank you and really appreciate every time you stop in. If you're new to our channel, consider giving us a thumbs up, hit the subscribe button, 
press the notification bell so you don't miss any new things that come out. Uh, we'd also like to remind you that we just put our new website together. I'll put the URL uh, description up above so you can check it out. Great place to see where all of our posts and tips and tricks are all organized so you can easily see what's available to help you in your journey. We'll see you guys next time. Okay, we're good here, Mark. Not on the pan. Look good. Did you miss the lamp? I think so. So when when I was coming in and I was turning in, I literally didn't see that lamp. Did you hear that? I don't think I did, no. I didn't hear it, but I didn't. I didn't. You would have hit this corner, huh? Whew. That would have been bad. This is pretty tight.